In the first episode of What Just Happened, I lamented the global descent into insanity. It is, as I declared, a mad, 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 mad world. And nowhere is it crazier than in the deranged climate change zone where our weird and unwonderful obsession with going green is in danger of destroying progress and propelling humanity back towards the Stone Age. All of a sudden, self-righteous politicians order us to swap our cars for bicycles, to subsist in cities clogged up with traffic jams caused by unused bike lanes, to never again board an aeroplane for a holiday in the sun, to replace our efficient gas boilers with hopeless heat pumps that will leave you shivering through every winter, to stop eating meat, to agree to a mass rejection of modernity so we can find out just how hard life really was in centuries past. They charge us enormous levies on our energy bills, ditch cheap homegrown fuel in favour of disastrous deals with Russia, insist that Britain can run on wind and solar power alone alone when it simply cannot and order us to batten down the hatches on the rocky retrograde road to something called carbon net zero by 2050, which is not going to happen and, even if it does, will not make a blind bit of difference to global pollution levels. Rishi Sunak and his Tory eco-acolytes continue on this pathetic path to pretend paradise because they're scared of Labour's gormless Green New Deal a charter for all-out lifestyle reduction that not-so-clever Keir Starmer is shamelessly trying to flog to the nation like a snake oil salesman cashing in on a banal fashion fad. And why are we, the long-suffering people, being bossed around about our evil gas-guzzling, electricity-using, flight-taking, beef-eating ways? This, and only this, so that Britain's increasingly inept Westminster elite can signal their gleaming virtue while kidding themselves that China's tyrannical despot Xi Jinping is losing sleep because the UK is doing so much to save the planet when he's doing the square root of zero. What utter delusional claptrap. Here's the stupefying deal, a deal that we simply should not put up with. After decades of diktats demanding clean air at all costs, Britain produces less than 1% of global pollution. In terms of carbon emissions, we are irrelevant. Perhaps someone should tell those Extinction Rebellion roadblockers that this country has done its bit. And instead of gluing their middle-class little hands to the M25, maybe they should head to Beijing to protest about China's colossal contribution to world pollution, an astonishing 28% and rising. Britain has three remaining coal fuel power stations. China has 1,100 and is busy building 300 more, not forgetting its massive national search for more coal seams to mine in Xi Jinping's mission to deliver continued dirt-cheap energy energy to his lucky citizens. Shout out of shame also to India, Russia, America, Brazil, even Australia and so many other countries that spew so much more carbon into the air than Britain does on the basis of scientific majority consensus rather than any definite scientific proof that mankind is solely responsible for climate change. The UK has gone from a self-sufficient energy powerhouse to a desperate bastard case on the cusp of a blizzard of blackouts while still pursuing balmy self-harming policies that just don't work. Don't vote for Labour's so-called fairer, greener future because it's not fair. And if all simpering Sunak and his counterfeit Conservatives can do is plummet deeper and deeper into the Alice in Wonderland abyss of empty green mantra chanting, don't vote for them either. Let's take a stand before it's too late and we end up in a medieval nightmare land of horses, carts and mud huts. Now let's get on with the show.